So just a short while ago, I was reading, uh, following up on some of my news feeds and that, and I came across a post that uh, quoted uh, Israel's uh, Defense Minister Gallant as uh, mentioning how uh, captured Hamas terrorists are revealing that the Hamas organization is beginning to collapse from within under the, uh, 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 as Israel continues to neutralize, uh, as a matter of fact, it had neutralized 18 out of 24 of the Hamas battalions in that. Uh, this, of course, is good news as we see Hamas ultimately, uh, if, if in fact they, they begin to crumble and, and no longer can uh, wage their war against Israel, then it's possible there could be, um, you know, some peace in that, in, in that area until, of course, things ramp up again. You would think. However, in even more recent news, it turns out that Israeli uh, airstrikes have taken out the consulate, the Iranian consulate, the Iranian consulate in Damascus, Syria. Now, that's provocative on a number of fronts. Um, the uh, Hamas and a number of other groups like Hezbollah, uh, the Iranian Guard, of course, um, the Houthis in Yemen, what do they all have in common? They are proxies of Iran or Persia, as she's known in Ezekiel 38 and in the Old Testament. But what's provocative about this is that this is not Israel going after um, just uh, Iranian uh, munitions, uh, like in uh, in Doha or something like that. It's it's not like it's just you know taking out uh, something at the airport in, in Damascus or something. This actually is a consulate now. It, it this feels like an escalation, um, and so I I, th- I think it's worthy of paying attention to. I I'm always a little leery about being premature, and I certainly don't want to get all speculative about what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen. But this is the kind of event that you want to pay attention to, because even though uh, the the back and forth uh, between you know Israel and Hamas or uh, any of the other uh, proxies, Iranian proxies that that they end up having to fend off, these things go on and they escalate and they de-escalate and all this kind of thing. One of these times, one of these events is going to take place and it won't die down, and so you just want to pay attention and just see what happens in the days ahead. Uh, it is significant, by the way, that Russia has also waited and called this attack um, unacceptable. The fact that Russia is weighing in on it, it's no secret that Russia and Iran are allies and that tensions between Russia and Israel uh, are ever-present. Um, there's also this sort of sense that Netanyahu may be being weakened as people are calling for new elections, even, of course, as you've read in recent days, some of our own um, American uh, Congress people uh, calling for um, uh, you know new elections and that kind of thing, seeming to sort of indicate that support for Israel uh, among our Congress maybe is not as strong as as sometimes the rhetoric would imply. Well, these are all very important elements in the soup, and so we want to just uh, or ingredients in the soup. So we want to pay attention, just see what's going on, watch what happens in the days ahead. I would imagine that this post may not, uh, you know, may become obsolete relatively quickly. But really, my intention is not to give a thorough explanation of, of, of these events, because that has yet to be seen. And again, I don't want to speculate a lot, but I do want to urge you to pay attention. Uh, one element of this in particular, one of the ingredients in the soup, is the fact that once again, Damascus uh, is in view here as the consulate, Iran, Iran's consulate in Damascus was struck. Any time you hear about Israel striking in Damascus, immediately Isaiah 17.1 comes to mind, where there is mention of how one day uh, Damascus, this uh, among, if not the longest, uh, in, uh, most consistently inhabited city in the world, will be decimated prophetically. We see that again in Isaiah 17. And many, including myself, think that uh, when Damascus is destroyed, if in fact Israel destroys it, uh, the way it would appear to um, be unfolding, I, I mean, it, it seems in the current context that that probably will be how it goes down, um, that that will likely begin to open the gates to you know further conflict escalating into uh, potentially Ezekiel 38 and 39. So again, just a quick post, and again, this is a quick post to just encourage you <coughs> to pay attention to what's going on in the Middle East right now. Uh, anytime Israel seems to escalate like this, we want to make sure that we're not um, ignorant to what's happening here, especially biblically. We want to keep our our eyes open. We may be witnessing things unfold that will have um, biblical uh, imports. So let's watch that and pay attention to it. But right now, let's pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Father, we want to thank you for uh, what you're doing in the world around us as believers, as Bible believers, as those who are considering what you've had to say in your word regarding uh, the last days. We just want to 
make sure that we're aware of what's going on around us and pay attention. We don't want to be caught off guard with these things. And certainly, we know that one day you will fulfill your prophetic purposes. And if that's today, then we, on the one hand, grieve over what we know is going to be destruction and, and war and all these kinds of things. But there's a part of us that longs very much to see your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we know that these things that we're seeing going on around us will one day uh, come to an end finally when Christ comes to deliver his people, when he comes to establish his kingdom. Uh, but for now, help us to pay attention to what's going on around us, that we might uh, understand it through the lens of Scripture, that we not speculate, that we not jump to conclusions, but that we be aware that um, that these are things that uh, feel like birth pangs. They feel like the ball is moving forward. They feel like they're escalating towards something bigger. So help us to be um, prayerfully prepared uh, if things do, that we would be about the business you called us to, gospel ministry, on the search and rescue mission. That really is what we're to be about as ambassadors of Christ here in this world. Thank you, Lord, where our citizenship truly about, uh, resides is, some, is, is a place that we are longing very, very much to be. So help us to watch. And most of all, help us to turn our eyes toward you as we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, your people, who are certainly in unbelief right now, but nonetheless, your covenant stands because your faithfulness is on the line. You will be faithful even to your unfaithful people. We thank you because that gives us hope that uh, and, 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 and courage and, and confidence, really, to stand in the knowledge that because you will be faithful to them, we know that you will also be faithful to us. And so thank you, Lord. We love you and praise you and ask you to accomplish your purposes that your name might be magnified in all the earth. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.